Hello, I'm Colonel Daniel Cott, Chief of Ambulatory Surgery at Darnell Army Community Hospital, Fort Hood, Texas. This program is being brought to you live via satellite. The student telephone lines will be open to receive comments and questions from you, the viewers. Commercial numbers are 512-221-6121, 221-6221. The computer telephone numbers are 512-221-6421, and that computer is in the TV studio here at Fort Sam Houston. Another backup computer is available, and that will be at area code 817-526-5915, and that is in Killeen, Texas. However, that is a backup computer and is unattended. The computer parameters for this show will be the baud rate is 300, the word lengths will be 7 bits, the stop bits will be 1, the parity will be even. We are pleased to have with us today Dr. Hammes, a radiologist from Darnell Army Community Hospital. Also with us, we will have Captain Stanley from the Automation Management Department of Darnell Army Community Hospital, Fort Hood, Texas. We would like to welcome today a viewing audience at the first annual conference on visual documentation in medicine at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The program there will be monitored by Dr. Jerry Hoffman and Dr. Albert Yusby. We will now get started with the program and I will present to you first a synopsis or outline of what this two hours will consist of. The hour is labeled Pac-Man, which means picture, archival, and communication systems and medical area nets. During the program in the background, you will hear a computer online while people are calling in and getting some of the information that we have to pass out to you. It will be utilized much more during the second hour of this program. The first hour we will present concepts in more or less a show and tell or lecture type format to show you a total hospital visual and documentation system, mostly uh, based on television and then how it will integrate with the computer in the near future. Then we will have a one hour break. During that one hour break, hopefully those of you who are not online to the computer yet will sign on, get your password, and then download the programs that we will have available for you to download, which will be medical reports on both pathology and radiology uh, examples. The first one half hour of the second hour will be presented mostly to the computers section workshop out in Fort Lauderdale. During that time, we will present some of the hardware and software to make this medical area concept work. Then during the second half hour, there will be a break out in Fort Lauderdale. During that time, hopefully we'll have the total audience back and we will tell it, tie in the concepts of telephony, which is a telephone, the computer and also television imaging all together so that all three can be working at the same time. That program will be formatted a little bit looser than the first hour in that we hope that you all will be able to get in on the telephone and also call the computer and download the information that we have available for you. During that hour, we will have many problems probably with the telephone or the computer. We will try to make those work if you can call on a voice line at the same time that you are on the computer. While you are on the computer line, only one person can be calling the computer. It is not a multi-line. Only one line will be available into the computer, so if it's busy, that means that something, somebody else is online. We do have another network of 10 universities, three of which have already checked in with us throughout Pennsylvania, Iowa, and Michigan, who will be trying for that line too, so it may be tied up. However, we have dedicated about one half hour to that part of the program. Now we will show you uh, the concepts, mostly with the slide presentation, of putting together a system like we are going to describe today. The first slide here shows a reference on most of these concepts. It's labeled visual documentation, it's about one year old, however it does have many tables, charts, and references to the type of material that we're going to talk about today and specifically the equipment. 
Here we see one of the problems that can occur once we start moving in television, computers, uh, electrosurgery, and gas machines into the operating room in addition to surgery. There are multiple cables. We trip over them. They can cause some hazard to the patient and also can interfere with each other, such as the radio frequency of the electrical surgery can kill the signal to the television or the radio frequency from a computer can cause problems with the television. First, we'll start with the visual documentation, that which is oldest, and that is photographic film. This shows a complete setup that can be used through the whole hospital to document any procedure. It is an OM2 camera with a flash that is very cheap and available and will fit on the camera and then the adapter up there in the corner. This is the adapter attached to a endoscope. Any adapter can be placed in front of the lens or you can buy a special adapter to place behind the lens. This shows a view through a histoscope using that adapter and that camera and you can see that the camera automatically does most of the work for you. It automatically calculates the exposure and the timing and almost always will give you a picture that is at least uh, of some value for diagnostic purposes and usually for teaching purposes. This shows the same, x -ray, uh, the same patient with an x-ray which was taken with the same camera by placing the x-ray on a view box. The defect is there in the upper left corner. Here we see a laparoscope view, again using the equipment we'll talk about, that one single camera, and we can see a double uterus. This is an x-ray, a hysterosalpingogram, showing the same thing, again taken with the same camera. If you have it in the operating room when you're through with the case, you can take a picture of the x-ray, and you have both slides available. This shows a better view of a laparoscope view through that same camera and endoscope. Usually a straight endoscope is used, not one that is operating or has prisms or that will bend the light. You can see here the enlarged ovaries and a very nice view with the OM2 camera and just a regular television and photographic light source. This shows a camera on top of a uh, microscope adapter. This is a relatively cheap Microscope adapter costs about $20 that now can place that camera on top of the microscope and you can take very nice microscope pictures. This shows a close-up of the adapter. It's available in most camera stores. And this shows a picture taken again with that camera that calculated the exposure. Most of this equipment is available for less than $500 and usually somewhere between two to $300 range. Here shows another concept that we would try to uh, push through today and that of making the equipment compatible and will interface. You may want to com interface the x-ray pictures with the laparoscopy pictures with the data and this is demonstrating that not in electronic documentation but just in plain video documentation using film. Here we show the camera with an adapter for an operating microscope. The lever there allows you to send 100 percent of the light either to a TV camera, which is set on there, or to the 35 millimeter camera, rather than split the light and lose a fair amount of the light, usually 50% to one or the other devices. And this is relatively important, depending on the kind of film you use and the TV camera that you use. I see the computer is coming online, and evidently the people are not having too much trouble getting through to the computer. Hopefully it'll work like that for the rest of the hour. Now. This shows a coposcope on a doctor's examining table in a GYN clinic which utilizes Polaroid film. So we do have instantaneous recording now with Polaroid film in the 35 uh, millimeter formats and the print film formats. This shows a side view of it, relatively cheap uh, coposcope. Uh, it is not very expensive in terms of a uh, coposcope that's compatible with television and uh, interfacing with various television multi-camera systems, but it does supply a very good Polaroid picture to you. Now, some of the reasons for using television may be to record surgical procedures. Here you see a surgical procedure being recorded in Hawaii or at, at Tripler Army Medical Center, utilizing these techniques as far back as 1977. You can utilize these recordings at meeting and courses, of which you out there in Florida right now are receiving and also just play for plain documentation for the record or for the patient's record or for your own record. 
Television also can be utilized for just plain monitoring procedure. Here we see a chief of the department monitoring one his, of his ophthalmology residents doing an operative procedure so he doesn't have to be scrubbed. He also could be down in the clinic and if he were called on the phone could monitor this procedure from his office. So you can monitor, you can actually use a television monitor for microscopic exams such as a wet smear in gynecology and letting the patient ex examine the sperm or the vaginal discharge at the same time the doctor is. Here we see communication consultation via live satellite, which is just one of the type of disciplines we're utilizing today to bring you this program. The live satellite, which goes from here to the equator and then back down to you all in Florida, to you all in Pennsylvania, Iowa, Michigan, and whomever else is watching the program. We also are going to use a telephone, which is a network we're all familiar with, and then now the new networking system of computers. Here we see an older camera, much more expensive than the ones we will present that was utilized to record many of the programs prior to 1980 that we made here at the Academy of Health Sciences. This is a 3-2 camera and very expensive. This is a home TV camera that we will show you some view of, of various procedures. It costs less than $800 or around $800 depending on where you buy it and discounts and so on and it actually gives you a very good picture as compared with some of the more expensive cameras today. Here's a container or the box. It's very important to buy some very good box to carry your equipment in. Now we will show you a more commercial camera. The advantage of this camera you can see is that it's got a monitor. It will also gin lock to a multi-camera system as we are showing you today. Now we will show you through videotape a close-up of what I consider one of the ideal cameras to be utilized in a studio today or in a hospital. It's actually tied in with this microscope. It can be placed on any medical piece of equipment that we have. It's a very nice camera, sits on top of a very nice microscope. Here we can see a pointer, which you all will see in a minute, a, a view through this scope with a pointer, a very nice camera control unit that is portable has a handle, can be carried throughout the hospital, and has multi-dials that we can sync in with many pieces of equipment in a multi-camera system. Now we'll show you a view through the scope. We'll actually look through the scope, and we should have a picture there. This is a lymph node in peritoneum, it was actually a case of splenosis, and you can see us moving the pointer to demonstrate to you various things that may be important to someone on the other end. We will show this much more during the second hour. Now we will go back to the cameras and the TV systems. This is this camera that we showed you. Here's a camera control unit sitting on top of a very nice video recorder today that actually records in times and second. It has a fast forward and fast reverse, a little dial in the far right there you can see which is very important in recording and can be locked into systems with computers that will log the procedures as you are doing them. This shows a, another view of the microscope and the adapter on top of it. Now we'll show you some of the cheaper adapters. These are relatively expensive adapters for programs like this or when you want to sync in through microwave or satellite with others. The expensive adapter is on the right the very small silver adapter there is worth only about $25. The adapter on its left is about two to $300. So you can get these in any price ranges if you want to get in and learn these techniques. Here's a small adapter, sells for under $35, about a $300 adapter. And then another adapter that does have a focusing device usually sells for under $500. And a relatively expensive adapter with a six-way uh, prism there. Now we'll talk a little bit about one of the absolute essentials, and that is light. We cannot take the operating room and move it outside as they've done here, but we have to move the sunlight inside, and that's a very important concept. If you think in terms of sunlight or 5,000 plus Kelvin temperature, now you are thinking in terms of a totally compatible system with television and photography. If you're operating at studio lights, you may have problems. Their Kelvin temperature is usually 2800 to 3200. Here we show an operating room light 
We have four of them at the hospital that we are talking about, two in operating rooms side by side and two in delivery rooms side by side. This stays in the operating room light all the time and you can record any operating procedure you are going to do. Here's a close of it. You can see a zoom lens there. There's a very small TV camera behind there. On the right is a place for you to put a 35 millimeter camera and you can also uh, take flash pictures as there's also a built-in flash. This obviously, obviously takes a fair amount of thought beforehand as you are designing and building a hospital to get the budget program and to get these systems programmed into the places where they will be needed to make a total hospital system. Here's an operating room view showing on the monitor behind there, which we'll zoom in on in just a minute. The operating room light you can see is on. There's a picture on the monitor behind the doctor's head. There is a system. This is our portable system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You can see a measuring uh, device there measuring the uterus. Here's a close-up view showing a very nice view. This is actually from the TV monitor with the uh, camera that we talked about. This is good in itself just for documentation. Here's another type of system whereby instead of getting a bird's eye view, from the operating room light, you can move it around and point it where you want it. My preference is to get a bird's eye view from the operating room light, so as you move the operating room light, whatever the operating room light sees, you will see. Here you can see another approach to total documentation, and that is of utilizing both instruments and retractors that have blackened, burnished, or blue blades. This is very important or your whole system will fall apart if you get too much reflection of light. Now we will show you a short videotape utilizing this operating room camera and system. Okay. Yeah, watch, watch now. Here, this is what we're on right there. Okay. Zoom in. So that essentially we just got the size. We don't need all that. There. A little bit more. I can't see here. There. A little bit more. See, we still got right here. You can get just right inside of that there. There you go. Good, beautiful. Now, one, one more time to get rid of this. Good, okay, now. Try to focus more. Yeah. The next view now doesn't have sound. You can see that view did have sound. You can actually record the sound with the video, and that's very important if you're going to log these tapes or want to uh, find it in the future. This is actually a breach delivery for a videotape that we are making for May presentation. We did this on a Sunday when the operating rooms were very vi busy with traumatic cases, so it demonstrates that it can be done at any time. The doctor with the operating room light was working the light and a nurse was just pushing the zoom. You could hear that, hear that in the previous tape there, pushing the zoom button and actually turning on the recorder. So it's a very nice system to be utilized, again, whenever you need it. Now we'll get into endoscopy television and photography. This first view demonstrates some of the essentials of utilizing a high-powered light source, which is usually called a high uh, power a television or photography light source or heavy duty. There are some differences. One, as I said, is usually the Kelvin temperature. That's very important. Two is the life of the bulb. These bulbs, can, if you touch them, they can burn out very, very quickly, so you never handle with your finger the bulb. Uh, the bulb can have a very short lifespan, and the illumination is cut down tremendously. Therefore, it's well worth putting the money into a multi-purpose, good uh, photographic and television light source. Here shows some of the adapters of the various kinds. The one on the left there goes right on top of a lens. This is one way to get television and photographic images to a camera. The one in the middle goes right on a C-mount and that is very important that you know C-mount for the average TV camera. I would not buy a TV camera if you have a choice in this day and age without C-mount. That's the standard. It's been around 10 or 15 years in movies and it's now very strong in television. Then on the right you see another approach to it, a little bit harder to work uh, rather than just the knurled knob there. As you can see those two levers have to come back and adapt to the size of the hopefully standard eyepiece that you have on your monitor. Here we can show again one 
homemade one on the left, which was made by our machinists, and then a bought one on the right. Again, both of them on top of C-mount lenses. However, they are in the filter screwing device for the lens where you screw in your various kinds of filter. So this is one way to do it. The other is just by an adapter that fits on the C-mount. This shows a view in the operating room of using this cheap home camera and now we will see some of the good views that this camera presents as compared with some other cameras and we'll discuss the differences between them. A Little bit bulkier and a little bit heavier, however it works very well once the doctor trains himself in television techniques and utilizing a monitor to operate and view rather than through the camera. There is a black and white monitor there you can see with an eyepiece that you can actually view through the camera which is somewhat, as far as I'm concerned, of an advantage. This shows an articulated lens which was very popular a few years ago. It's very expensive and it now is used only in those cases where it have very lightweight scopes just as in fetoscopy or arthroscopy. This is a drawing of it. There are some major problems in that every prism can distort the view in that it turns it one way or the other and someone has to control it to upright the view. This shows the relatively expensive uh, articulated lens made approximately in 1975 and is not utilized very much anymore with modern day technology. This shows a procedure being recorded again in Hawaii for the tapes being made that were made there utilizing their articulated lens. One man must run the articulated lens alone. Now we will show some views through those instruments. The first view that you will see in osmosis site, we can see an inflammatory cyst there on the right ovary. Videotape is with the home TV an camera of the tube, that any doctor could can be probably afford to portion. buy. Definition is the very right good. Ovary, which is about twice Resolution is good, and, and the price is right. Cyst. There is normal fimbria. Oh, they're splaying. Yeah. Don't too often see that. This is showing a liver biopsy or a GI mm -hmm. procedure. You can see the spleen. This is being done with a high sensitive, low light camera that we use in same day surgery because we use it with both a hysteroscope, urethroscope, copal microscope, and also any small endoscope. So resolution is a little bit poorer, but it documents your procedure for you. At this point, we will go ahead and have the questions and answer sessions from Fort Lauderdale. Hopefully at this point we do have contact with Dr. Hoffman or the panel out there and hopefully you are ready with some questions to shoot to us here in the studio. If you do have any questions, I will probably answer this segment as the next two segments will be presented by Dr. Hammes and Captain Stanley. Okay, we are ready for your calls. Jerry? Okay, Jerry, are we coming through okay to you all? There's a little delay when you talk to us, so, and a little breakup, so talk relatively close to the mic and loud if you can. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Dr. Sodestrom wants to know the brand of the cheap or cheap? The cheap, the cheap app. app. Did you get that question? Yeah, I believe what you said is Dr. Soderstrom would like to know the brand name of the cheap TV camera. I don't believe there's any problem. We tried to wait, stay away from brand names, but in most of the writings I do, I think it's almost essential because there are many, many differences in brand names and models. That camera I've been talking about for about three years. It's held in there for me for three years. It is a Panasonic PK771. It is three years old, and TV cameras now every year change the models just like cars. So that camera probably is not available. However, after giving this lecture at various places, I do know one other physician that chose not to buy this camera, but the new model of the same camera, which obviously had 
a new tube, it's got a Nuvicon tube, and he assured me that his picture and resolution is just as good as mine. So basically, we have about nine TV cameras, and obviously I can't work with them all, but that line, Panasonic home video cameras, at least for three years, has held in there and given us a good picture. So it's Panasonic PK771, not available on the market today, but you may be able to buy one used, and if somebody just used it and didn't like it, it probably is as good as new. Does that answer the question? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, how expensive is the uh, camera the light? The camera in the optical light. How expensive is it? Camera how expensive in the operating room. How expensive? Light. The operating room light and camera systems bought for a total hospital design the way we have bought it for four operating rooms that includes the operating room light now from two different companies and the camera runs $20,000. One of those runs approximately $64,000. However, that includes a total system that includes a cabinet. The cabinet actually has in it the recorder and the main thing with that system is that the recorder does have a foot control. That's almost essential if you're going to only have you and the nurse doing the procedure. So that camera system is very functional and has a, done a very good job for us. However, they are nothing but standard pieces of equipment. The camera is made special by one company, and in my testing, the home Panasonic camera will actually give us a good view. But again, then you have the problem of buying a system versus a non-system. You're probably better off buying a system if you are buying it with experts who agree with your concepts. One of the problems with that system is that all of those cameras that we bought cannot be used into a multi-camera system as compared with the camera I presented to you a little bit earlier, which means in a multi-camera system, I can make it work by a system called gin locking and putting it at only as camera one. So if I bought four of those cameras on a multi-camera system, I can only use it as camera one, and then I have to have either one of the other two cameras I presented as camera two and three, or I could put in a color computer on channel one to sync the other system, and then I could not use any of the, these type of cameras. So these are things that the manufacturers and those of us who are interested in more than one camera online have to discuss and set some standards very early in the course, which hopefully will come from this meeting. Does that answer your question? Yes, that answers the question. We have one more question. When are you ready to go into your second segment, Dan? We are ready to go in. The second segment of this program will go on as soon as uh, we are through answering your question. So we have essentially five minutes on the question and answer if you have more of them. And if you don't, we may have some universities hanging in there for uh, a chance to talk, which I will ask our monitor in a minute. So is that all the questions you have? We have one more question, and then we'd like to hear from the university. Surely. And John Marlowe, the, another expense with this is the expense of the recording tape. Do you record on three-quarter inch, or do you VHS or smaller tape? That is a hard one to answer, John. Uh, because of the work that I do, and you've worked with me now for many years, I have tested all systems. And again, I have to get our TV engineers and our computer engineers to work with me and be willing to test some of these systems. I have done that in various ways, but the recommendation, the standard now for in institutional and industrial is a minimum of three-quarter inch tapes. Everything you just saw was recorded on three-quarter inch tapes, so you almost have to do that if you're going to do the kind of work that you and I are doing. If you're just interested in logging your patients for your uh, office and for your patients or for your in-hospital system, I have found that one VHS tape does just as good gives me just as good a resolution, 
costs a lot less. One VHS tape may only cost $10, and you can get eight hours of it. So you can get one patient. For example, one of my microsurgery patients may have one, two, three laparoscopies. We can record her laparoscopies, her hysterocelpingography, the microscope views of the Sims tuner test, the operation itself, and her hysterocelpingogram, whatever, all on that tape, and place it just on one tape and the patient can take it with her, you can give her a copy or you can file it for medical or legal reasons. So really it depends on how you're designing your system. The personal computer approach where you're going to put a personal computer only for your documentation, either the Betamax or the VHS is entirely satisfactory. If you want to get to the concept we're talking today, medical area nets and uh, satellite transmissions and microwave, you probably had better stay, stick with three-quarter inch tape and that can be time-based corrected up so that it's compatible with most of the other systems. So really that somewhat dis depends on your objectives. You can also obviously go into the expensive markets of one-inch tape and two-inch quad. I have been able to work in two-inch quad then down to one inch and now for two years with a three-quarter inch the advantage being, if you've looked at the tapes we have presented in the past, I can record in California at some of the meetings, for example, the AAGL microsurgery. I can record at Darnell. I can take all of these tapes into our system and send them to you just as I did. So I can mix and match essentially medicine around the world. My personal feeling is now or in the next year or two, I can take my Panasonic uh, recording system which you just saw, so it's a total system, or any other home recording system, and record well. The resolution is about as good as I just showed you on the other. Now, in tapes, for example, on two-inch quad, you may be able to go to dub down from anywhere from six to 10 generations. On three-quarter inch, it may be a maximum of three to four. In VHS, you probably have locked yourself into one to two generations at the most, and those are copies. So it depends on if you want to edit it, then you want a final edited section to take on. You need a minimum of probably three generation tapes. So my recommendation is those of you who've got the money are setting into a compute, complete medical area documentation system. Three quarter inch is still the standard, and uh, we may be able to work the one half inch in in the next year or two, but we are just not there yet. Does that answer your question, John? Uh, Dan? Yes. And we have one gentleman who came all the way from Holland wanted to give, ask a brief question. Can you indulge us? Yeah, we have one minute, and then we'll have to just go on and not receive any from the universities. I don't know if I have any yet. This hour was hopefully dedicated to the audience. The universities hopefully will have much more time uh, on our second hour. So go ahead. We've got one minute uh, left to answer a quick question. And I'm glad to have somebody here from Holland. Go ahead, Jerry. I'd like to ask a brief question. Uh, as I found out from your comment, more people would like uh, to make your recording with the camera directly mounted on the instrument. That's why if I work with this, I'd uh, like to work with the articulated arm, the optical articulated arm. Do you think to get that? Right. Jerry, you'll have to retransmit that. Hello. Jerry? Yes, got it. Uh, yeah, interpret it. He's not coming through that well. Uh, yes, what he wanted to know was whether you uh, are better off shooting through the articulated arm than putting your, or putting your camera on the instrument itself. Okay, that's a very important concept, and as generally speaking, the less optical devices you have between your camera and the TV camera, the better the picture. Every prism, every lens decreases your light somewhat. So if you can eliminate every lens, or as a minimum, the primary lens with that camera, you're better off doing it. So basically, don't use the articulated lens if you want good uh, resolutions don't use a prism to split through. So you look in and uh, you're seeing at the same time as on the TV monitor. Please develop a technique 
whereby you can look at the monitor and actually see and do your surgery there. Dr. Yusby in, Flor or in uh, Hawaii made a very nice di videotape demonstrating this several years ago. So it, once we get into television, hopefully the operator has to learn some TV principles and not think that the camera and system is going to do everything for him. So I would always eliminate an articulated lens system. There's too many prisms. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. Well, we'll go on to the second half of the program now. The second half of the program here will be presented by Dr. Hamas. He will cover the uses of television and somewhat computers as we have them designed at Darnell Army Community Hospital, our brand new hospital, completely set up for most of this. However, it'll be another year before we get the systems tied together, and he's very interested in both television and computers and is a real asset to us in trying to mesh the pathology, the operating room views, and the radiology department. So, Captain Hammes, would you present uh, uh, your medical area network information to the audience? Thank you, Dr. Cott. Uh, today I'm going to discuss a few of the archiving methods that we've been using in the Department of Radiology at uh, Darnell Army Community Hospital. <laughs> I feel that there is no area of medicine with as much potential for utilization of medical imaging and archiving as the area of, of radiology. Radiology is a very rapidly expanding and evolving field with many potential uses of existing and developing technology for storage and manipulation of the studies we are obtaining. The main archival system we've had in radiology up to and including the present time is the x-ray film. However, this system requires a large amount of file room and with the increases in silver prices, the development of new imaging procedures, that is, those other than the conventional x-ray, such as ultrasound, nuclear medicine, and computerized tomography, new archiving systems have also been, been developed. A good example is the fluoroscopy unit. Fluoroscopy is used as an aid in positioning the patient to obtain a picture and is also used for dynamic or motion studies. Conventionally, single spot films have been obtained to record selected images from the dynamic study. Originally, a film recording of the study was performed if the dynamic study was to be recorded. However, this resulted in a high radiation exposure to the patient, and now most x-ray departments have the capability of videotaping the fluoroscopic image from the image intensifier with much lower radiation exposure to the patient. I've noticed that with many of the new fluoroscopy units currently being sold, the standard videotape recorder is similar to the one that came with our new machines. This unit here has one inch reel-to-reel -reel tape with an awkward indexing system. It is difficult to locate and search through patient studies with this machine. I found this machine difficult to use personally and was consequently not using it with many studies that it may have been beneficial to have recorded moving images of the procedure. Also, physically transporting the recorded images to another machine or location was difficult with the reel-to-reel -reel tape. However, when we replaced this machine with a newer three-quarter inch cassette tape machine with a very good indexing system, it was much easier to record these images, and we began to rec record more fluoroscopy studies. Now we have clinicians who actually bring their own tapes to the radiology department for recording if they happen to have a particularly interesting patient. On this video recorder, the indexing system is particularly useful. If the fast forward or fast reverse button is pushed, the tape uh, index will momentarily pause between the individual patient studies in the blank spaces, making it easy to find the beginning or end of the study if you do not happen to know the exact index number. Also, uh, an easy to use variable speed search is provided making it easy to find a particular portion of the study. One other nice feature is the tape uh, index stops at the end of the last patient study, making it difficult, or making it simple, I'm sorry, to find this location to begin recording a study uh, that is to be added to the tape. Uh, this video tape machine is uh, hooked into this wall plate in our fluoroscopy room, which uh, was designed at the time of uh, design of the hospital and made it very easy for installation. The video tape machine also uh, can be controlled from, from the fluoroscopy uh, machine itself. Uh, ultrasound is another rapidly evolving area with the majority of examinations today being performed as real-time or, or motion studies. We can record these studies on videotape or on the conventional film with the latter being the more common. 
This is a multi-image matrix camera used in nuclear medicine and in ultrasound. These cameras can record a variable number of images on an 8 by 10 inch film. Uh, and at our institution, we record six static uh, images per film. In the base of this uh, camera is a video monitor, and the image is merely photographed from this monitor. Uh, the alt monitor can also be adjusted to achieve the desired grayscale and contrast level of the picture on the film. Again, with use of a videotape recorder identical to the one we use for fluoroscopy, we can record the entire examination as a dynamic study. We can even take the plain film static images on the matrix camera from the videotape recording later if desired. In nuclear medicine, many of the images uh, are recorded on film with the same multi-image camera. However, now with the uh, rise of digital technology in the computer, an increasing number of studies, especially uh, functional studies such as multiple gated cardiac scans, are being stored digitally for subsequent data manipulation and dynamic display. CT data is also handled digitally with extensive capability for manipulation of the data. Uh, computers are playing an increasingly important role in radiology, and systems are currently on the market for creating an entirely digital radiology department and completely eliminating film. This makes data manipulation and display easier, but the disk and storage cost remains high, though this is dropping, and probably more importantly, the uniform standards uh, do not exist today. This situation could be uh, analogous to the beta system versus VHS home video recording systems. Uh, today, 85% of the systems are VHS, though it took time for this system to predominate. With the digital technology, we can sit at the operator console and display the images on the high-resolution monitor and not rely on the file room to hopefully find the study from the huge stacks of stored films. Viewing of the images by the clinician can also be performed in his office or on the ward rather than having to physically retrieve the study from the radiology department. However, for the majority of us, I believe the entirely digital X-ray department is some time off we have to make uh, the most of the technology we actually possess now, which is television. Another area uh, with which we've been experimenting is the televised transmission of radiographic images from remote installations to the radiology department for consultation and interpretation. The system we have is basically a television camera with monitors connected to a videotape machine identical to those we've seen earlier, plus a microcomputer for indexing and retrieval of patient studies. The technician merely positions the radiograph on the view box beneath the television camera and then enters the patient data into the computer for recording of the image. For transmission from the remote installation, we have a microwave tower atop the hospital. The transmitted image can be viewed live by the radiologist for consultation with the referring physician or can be stored on the videotape for later viewing. We are hoping to expand this system for support transmission, uh, to support transmission of radiographs to Brook Army Medical Center our major referral center for educational conferences and consultation. These are a few of the archiving methods we have been using in the radiology department in our hospital. There are so many opportunities in this area for radiology that we have barely scratched the surface. I would welcome any suggestions which the audience might have, and uh, Captain Stanley will now speak on uh, computer networks. Captain Stanley? Thank you, Dr. Hammes. Good afternoon. Today I would like to discuss computer networks to be used in our hospital. But before I discuss our network, let me first define the term network. Network is used in this discussion defines the relationship between multiple pieces of hardware to one another. Simple networks are those excuse me. Simple networks are those where a single terminal may be ac may access multiple hosts by direct lines or commercial phone circuits. In the first slide that we have we show the simple network where the selection of hosts is determined by either a mechanical switch or the choice of phone line to be dialed. This concept has been improved upon by many manufacturers to provide an intelligent switch which the user must first access prior to actually connecting to the de desired host. These switches will connect the user to a specified CPU upon request. The user may terminate a session with one CPU and access another without having to leave the switch. This me method still requires discrete communication lines for each terminal. The second level of ner networking consolidates, consolidates the communication network. The upper portion of the slide diagrams a dual cable broadband network system. 
The boxes labeled T represent interface hardware referred to as buffered interface units or BIUs. Each BIU is capable of supporting up to four terminal devices, a mix of printers and CRTs, or if situated in the computer room, can support up to four asynchronous ports. I will cover some of the specific details of the cable system later since this is the method selected by the Army Medical Department for supporting the multi-terminal, multi-CPU environment. Basically, in a cable configuration, the user selects a host CPU by symbolic code and then the interface units establish the link. The cable reduces the number of discrete lines required to support terminals distributed throughout a facility. These cable systems use radio frequency transmissions to carry data at speeds close to 100,000 characters per second, or 1 megabits if you like smaller chunks. The system may be either single or dual cable. The interfacing depicted in the lower half of the slide demonstrates two methods of CPUs sharing data and software resources. The link, the link between the hosts will allow data transfer between the CPUs and in the more advanced systems will allow data to remain resonant on one machine ma one machine's mass storage device while manipulating software is on the second machine. For example, on machine A, the user has collected data generated from a study and machine B has the software required to analyze and or graph the data. This is not totally uncommon when data is collected in real time as it's being generated, a task which will often burden the fastest machines to the point where other users of the system will not be able to work or data will be lost. Or a company may have two systems sitting side by side and they don't really want to expend the funds to duplicate all their software for both systems. The link to the mass storage device in the lower middle is a dual ported subsystem which can be accessed by both systems. This enables the access of data by both systems without requiring additional CPU processing re requirements as opposed to the host-to-host uh, -host link which will require a certain amount of CPU resources. The last configuration describes what could be called the virtual machine. Any authorized user is allowed access to all hosts via a single communications network and data can be shared by all CPUs. This is a logical evolution of our computer networks. The Darnell Army Community Hospital, and as a sub subordinate command of the Army Medical Department, has chosen the dual cable system as its communications base. In this cable system, we can transmit computer data, video data such as x-rays, and educational programs and uh, entertainment TV for our patients. The cable system itself is comprised of commercial TV components. Each cable is a one-way traffic device. All of the outputs are placed on one cable and the input is taken from the opposing cable. Each, for computer applications, the cable is capable of handling, handling a multiple of frequencies. Each frequency is typically capable of handling a minimum of 256 uh, terminal devices. The amount of terminals supported on, it, on a particular cable is dependent upon the manufacturer's hardware. But realistically the minimum amount that you will find is 256 terminals. The BIU uses, sends out a message while using a talk while listen protocol. The unit will send out a message and collect its message in its input buffer. It then compares the output message to the input message. If they're equal, it continues and transmits the next message in the buffer. If they're not equal, the unit generates a random number, uses that number for a seed to generate a to go into a time delay. At the end of the time delay, it retransmits its message and then continues in the same process until all transmissions are completed. Unfortunately, our cable system is not operational at this time. Later this year, when the remodeling to the hospital is completed, we will have our cable system. Currently, we are using a twisted pair network which of uh, 900 pairs, which will support 450 terminal devices. Computer systems scheduled for installation on the cable network include support for our radiology department, our patient administration department, and the laboratory. Today I have covered in simple terms computer networks. My intent was not to be specific, but to provide you with a starting point to learn about multiple methods to distribute information while minimizing your capital expenditures. There are plenty of vendors who are ready to help you find the absolute best solution for your predicament. If you would like more information or specific references, I can be contacted through the Darnell Army Community Hospital Automation Management Office, Fort Hood, Texas, or through Dr. Kai.
Dr. Cott. Thank you for a very nice presentation, both Dr. Hammes and Captain Stanley. Uh, we are running a little short on time. I think thanks, you can see, to the enthusiasm of the people that we have presenting here. We all believe very strongly in these concepts, and hopefully it will branch out. What I'd like to do now is take approximately the 10 minutes for questions and answer. Uh, if Jerry doesn't mind in Fort Lauderdale, uh, I'd like to take five minutes for you all and see if there are any universities that haven't gotten online uh, and give them approximately three to five minutes of questions. As I say, they will have much more time during the next uh, half hour. We did have the University of Iowa just signed on the computer, so at least we know they're on the computer, and we'll see if they give us a call. So, Jerry, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good. Uh, do you have any questions? We certainly don't mind you do as you're proposing. Uh, yes, sir, I think there are some questions. Uh, one of the questions is uh, by Dr. Leventhal. At this moment, I'll put him on directly. Hi, John. Oh, Dan. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you're reading me? Right, you're coming through loud and clear. Uh, I was not able to understand whether or not you are live in your hospital with video information from the radiology department or the pathology department to the operating room or other clinical areas in the hospital. And if you are, uh, might, uh, might you just mention that? If you are not, would that, network, would that apply to the networking that was just presented? Uh, yes, to some extent. Uh, we are not live yet. The new hospital is still in reconstruction. We actually added a very large new hospital on an old. So we just moved into our uh, new operating rooms. We were using delivery rooms for operating rooms for about nine months. Plus the trimest cable, the two cable systems uh, that we discussed uh, are not connected at the head end. So all of the equipment is in that uh, in the operating rooms all of the interfacing equipment is in, but it will probably be another four months to six months before it is all connected together. The biggest problem is our classroom will not be through for six months, and that's where most of the equipment that ties the system together uh, to make it work uh, will be finished. So therefore, at this point, uh, I cannot say that we can push a picture anywhere unless we get somebody specifically to wire uh, cable through the through the hospital, which we have done, let's say, from an x-ray room where the hysterosalpingogram is into the doctor's viewing room where the teleradiology and the Apple computer is. So the right. we, we, we have another question go from ahead. Uh, uh, Mr. Godbarson from General Electric. Go ahead. Uh, question for Captain Hammond. Yes. And the question, uh, do your future plans of optical laser disc as an archival system for radio. Do you foresee it placing film at some future day? Uh, for the future, for that's a tough question. Uh, I, I don't see that, that the, uh, the uh, technology now can support that. For archiving films, if you're talking about archiving films, I don't think so. I think we're talking about uh, digitally recording on on tape. I, I don't know about uh, right now the laser recording system that I'm aware of is an analog system. I know that the digital is being worked on. I don't know how far along it is and if the specs that I've heard on it are, are uh, that good then maybe it will come to that but I really don't know. Does Captain Stanley, he's more the engineer. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, certainly. Currently, there are many developers within uh, your areas looking at different ways to store and archive uh, imaging. We prefer in the computer field to see it go digitally because we can enhance those images both in uh, quality of reproduction and by using color differentiation to enhance the, uh, the image given to the doctor for uh, diagnostic purposes. The clinical imaging system that, would, that Dr. Hammer showed to you does use color contrast and in addition to black and white and uses a digital fast Fourier transform analysis to enhance the images. Um, 
it's a while off. The cost is still ex excessive for medium hospitals or those who would have uh, not as large an endowment as, as the major medical centers. Uh, does that help you at all? Okay, thank you, Jerry. We're, we'll see if uh, we have any questions from any of the uh, National University Television Conference Network. Uh, Jim Daly, is there anybody online from uh, there? Okay, we will go ahead then and conclude the program. Uh, and as I said, we will be back online at 2 o'clock with the, hopefully, the system design that will tie lots of this together for you, mostly from a a uh, personal computer or a small system user because if we make the small system compatible with the big the big ones are already out there and all we have to do is tie into them so that concludes today's presentation so I'd like to thank you both Captain Hammes and Captain Stanley for a very informative discussion and your enthusiasm with this uh, uh, process that we're talking about as we close this program today, I would like to emphasize that the BAMSI Hour, which is what we're presenting to you, is presented every day at 1200 hours Central Standard Time on this transponder and this satellite. Following this program will be a one-hour discussion of medical telecommunication system more in a workshop fashion. This program will be available after this as a videotape and will be listed in our catalog as M3509. Correction, that's 08. The next program will be miscellaneous M3509. So this will be available in the future. Now, I would like to thank all of you, and especially Dr. John Leventhal, who put most of this together. And if it weren't for him, we would probably would not be talking to you all out there in Florida. And all of you who are interested in these concepts and have paid your time and taken your time, uh, paid your money and taken your time to go to the meeting out there. All, thanks for watching this Health Services Command Special. Thank you, and we'll see you at 2 o'clock.